so our, we're in a series right now in our, our church that uh, just this last Sunday, I, I in, we're in First Corinthians. So Paul was in a church uh, at, at Corinth, which resembled a lot of what our church modern would look like, which is it was mm. full of division. But it, what it was really full of was the culture seeping into the church instead of the yeah. church seeping into the culture. And if our church is as divided as the world around it, then our church is uh, reflecting the world and not reflecting Christ. And what Paul said, the, the anecdote of it was, um, which is this passage that guys like you and I have read, we both grow up in Holy Ghost backgrounds, but he, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, I think it's 3 or 4, when he says that I didn't come to you with eloquent words, uh, with a well-crafted speech. I came nope. to you with fear, with trembling, uh, and with nothing but the, uh, to, I resolved to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. Yeah. I came to you, fear and trembling, and, uh, and a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And Philip, God uh, showed me something that, I, that blew my mind, which is that right before he got to Corinth, mm -hmm. he was in Athens. Mm -hmm. And if you remember right, in Athens, he preached the sermon that's like studied at seminaries all over the world. You know, the, he, he's, it was culturally relevant. He worked in the, the unknown gods. And, and yeah. uh, I think it's somewhere around verse 21. It says that the people there uh, sat, the, the, the people of uh, Corinth, Athenians, whatever, sat around and uh, thought and listened to the latest ideas. That's exactly, it's almost a direct quote. Like they yeah. sat around and they just listened to the latest ideas. I'm like, that gum, that's like what we're doing in our country right now. <laughs> but, but, but here's my point. So, so he, he does that, he does that sermon. It's brilliant. It's, it's, it's theologically sound, all that stuff. But at the end of chapter 17, there's no church that's planted. There's no move of the Holy Spirit. And it says that, so, and there were some believers that followed Paul. By the, and it doesn't say they followed Jesus, they followed Paul. Wow. So I wonder if what happened with Paul was he preached a great sermon and realized that was a dud because cultural relevance was not going to break the power of darkness in their lives. And so the next thing he does, chapter 18, he goes to Corinth of Acts 18. And that's what he says here in 1 Corinthians uh, 2. And by the time I got to you, I resolved that I was going to not come to you with an eloquent speech, but nothing but Christ and him crucified. Absolutely. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the uh, Holy Spirit. Demonstration of that. And that's what we've, I've spent a yeah. lot of energy this year trying to write great blogs, to uh, write uh, culturally relevant sermons. Yeah. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's going power to change people's lives. I, I, I believe in theology. I believe in being intelligent. We don't have to check our brains at the door. But we're not going to argue somebody into the kingdom of God. It's no, the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And so we need that Methodist, in our country more than ever. I've got a Methodist pastor, all my best friends, a tremendous man of God. I mean, a tremendous man of God. And I went to see him the other day. And uh, he's, they're having tremendous trouble in the Methodist denomination because they're ordaining yes. homosexuals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he says, do you know the fastest growing church in the world? I says, let me guess. Would it be the Pentecostal church? He says, yeah. I says, you're surprised? He was surprised. <laughs> you're surprised? I says, let yeah. me tell you something. God moves by his spirit. He moves by the Holy Spirit working in people's lives. And I, and I believe with all my heart. When Jesus spoke in the temple and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because mm -hmm. he has anointed me too. And what we've missed a lot in Pentecost is that we thought the blessing or the anointing that came upon us was for our blessing and our benefit. Right. But that's not, that's a misuse right. of the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy yes. Spirit comes upon you, you're anointed too. Heal the broken heart. Be my witnesses. Yes. Be the witnesses. To be my so, witnesses. Yeah. Yes. So when we when we employ the Holy Spirit, I, if, if you just think that the Holy Spirit is falling on the ground and talking in tongues and dancing in circles, you've missed the point of the moving of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is yes. given to take guys like Peter that had so, sold Jesus down the river when he was accused by a little girl and turned him in a moment through the power of the Holy Ghost into an instrument that became the, the rock. He, beca he became the main guy in the church that he had failed just a few days or weeks, weeks before. And what yeah. the Holy Ghost does is when we allow him to have his way in our lives, it will revolutionize not just your intellect, but your knowing. I know yes. whom I have believed. And that's where the church needs to get back to, to let the Holy Ghost have his way in our midst. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause you would, um, the way, the, what you're saying is right. That the, the global church that is growing the fastest is yeah. the Pentecostal church. Yeah. And church absolutely. when one of the things that we do at, at conduit, especially when I, like I, I did it on Sunday, when I talk about quote unquote, the church, I'm actually referring to the American church yeah. because the church in China, they're not having these problems. They're not worried about the culture. They're, 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 they're just, nope. they are literally, and, and, and if you are in a place like where they are in China, where they're fear and in trembling because the government is holding out on them, they're, they're in danger like they are in Romania, like yeah. they are in, in Nepal and in, in Pakistan. And when, what did Paul say? I came to you with fear and with trembling, you know, not as this, you know, hero guys. I'm just coming in and saying, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if the Holy Spirit doesn't show up, then I can't do this. And Absolutely. If, if the listeners right now, if you are in fear and in trembling in the United States in the last year of what's happening, okay, know that you are a perfect candidate for the Holy Spirit to Absolutely. move into you. Because we, we talk about being filled with the Spirit, but, uh, you know, sometimes we've got to empty our, we got to talk about being emptied, right? Because the Holy yep. Spirit can't fill a full vessel. No, he so cannot. if I've been full of pride, if I'm full of hope for my, in my government, full of my culture, full of... Yeah. emptying all of that up makes you the perfect candidate. And that's what I think Paul was saying. I just emptied it out. I, I did the best thing I could do, the best sermon I could preach. And it wasn't that great. Didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I got, I'm just coming to you now with nothing but Christ and him crucified Fabulous. and the power of the demonstration of the Holy spirit. Fabulous. Well, you are blessing me so much right now. I know that I'm watching and you've been trying to do it by yourself. Mm. It, yeah. it doesn't work. I promise you all you'll end up being is frustrated mm. and discouraged. This, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. And if you could only realize that mm -hmm. the, 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 it isn't how much you box, it's how much yeah. you stop boxing. It's upside down. It, it, it's great. It's insane. In the kingdom of God, things work the very opposite of the kingdom of this world. The more you yeah. fight, the less you win. The less you fight, the more you win. Mm -hmm. He is the conqueror. I'm, I, all I am is there for the right. I'm yeah. watching and trusting and leaning on him. And the more I lean, the stronger I get. It's insane. The weaker I am, God's strength is made perfect in weakness. God needs an, an extra ingredient. Listen to me. God's strength is made perfect when a final ingredient is added to it. I, do you remember those old glue things you get? And there's like two plungers and, and the, the two, two liquids would go into one nozzle and by themselves yeah. they were inert. Yeah. But when you push these things together and the two fluids mixed, then they became the, the miracle glue of all time. God needs one more ingredient, huh. one more ingredient to make his strength perfect. God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. How dumb is that? So I've got to go to him and say, I just don't know what I'm doing. I, I just give up. I trust you. Though you slay me, I'm going to trust you. I don't care what, what circumstance it is I'm facing. I'm just a weak, but I'm, I'm trusting and leaning upon you. And God says, well, finally, I've got the final ingredient to make my strength perfect. And he is yeah. working out right now in your circumstance, in your family, in your business, in your body, in your church. And if you could understand this, that the battle is not yours. You are not def de made and created to, to be battling this battle. It isn't yours. It's the Lord's. And the more you can relax in his grace and relax in his, yes. his promise, yes. you can then stand up in confidence and say, it ain't me. You better talk to the boss. Yeah. Talk to the boss. Uh, and that's the power of the Holy Ghost.